Hello everyone and welcome to part 1 of our routing and protocol configuration series. Today we are going to configure routing information protocol or RIP using Cisco Packet Tracer. We will start by setting up our routers, moving on, configuring RIP version 1 and finally we will upgrade to version 2. If you are just getting started with dynamic routing protocols, this is the perfect place to begin. Let's dive into it. First, we need to configure the host names and IP addresses for our routers. This will lay the groundwork for the RIP configuration. We will start with router 1. We will configure router 1's host name, assign IP addresses to both interfaces, one connected to the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network and the other to the 10.1.1.0.30 network and make sure the interfaces are up. Now that router 1 is set up, let's move on to router 2. Router 2 is connected to three different networks. The 192.168.2.0 slash 24 local network, the 10.1.1.0 slash 30 link to router 1, and the 10.1.2.0 slash 30 link to the router 3. We will configure its host name and assign IP addresses to each interface. Finally, router 3 is connected to the 192.168.3.0 slash 24 network and the 10.1.2.0 slash 30 network. Let's configure that now. If you are finding this video helpful so far, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps the channel grow and lets me know that you are enjoying the content. Also, consider subscribing if you want to see more networking tutorials and tips. And as always, feel free to drop any questions in the comment below. I will be happy to help. Now that our basic browser setup is complete, let's move on to configure RIP version 1. RIP version 1 is a class full routing protocol, which means it doesn't support submitting or classless routing. So we will start with router 1 and enable RIP on it. Next, we will configure router 2. Router 2 connects to multiple networks, so we need to advertise all of them. Finally, let's configure router 3 and add it to the RIP network. Now that RIP version 1 is configured on all the routers, let's verify that the routes are propagating. Using the show IP route command, we can confirm that each router has learned the networks of the others. Now that RIP version 1 is working, let's upgrade to RIP version 2. Unlike version 1, RIP version 2 is support classless routing, meaning it can work with submitting and variable length subnet mask VLSM. We will start with router 3 and change it to RIP version 2. Next, we will configure router 2 to use RIP version 2. Lastly, we will upgrade router 1 to RIP version 2. With all the routers now running version 2, let's confirm everything is working as expected by checking the routes table once again using show IP route. We should now see that all the routers are successfully exchanging routes using group version 2. If you are following along and everything is working for you, let me know in the comments below and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next part of this series where we will cover more advanced routing protocols. And that's it for today's video. We have set up our routers, configured RIP version 1 and upgraded to RIP version 2. 
We have also seen how the routes are automatically propagated through the network, allowing seamless -like communication between all devices. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with anyone who might benefit from it. In the next video, we'll dive into another dynamic routing protocol, so stay tuned, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.